All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tamba. Welcome to our Africa for the Africans tours uh, conference call for February 21st, 2021. And today we're here to talk about uh, all of the preparation information for traveling to Senegal and the Gambia, uh, April 2nd to the 12th, uh, for Ghana, May 24th to June 5th, and for uh, Tanzania, November 18th to the 29th, and all of those details, 100% of the schedule, preparation lists, um, itinerary, general terms, overview, visa information, and so on, is on our website, africaforthafricans.org, or africaforthafricans.org, and the main thing is all of those tour links are on the main menu of the website, so once you click on it, you have access to 100% of the details. And that's what I recommend everyone that's traveling with us in the future do. Uh, and especially for those who are joining or have made a decision, uh, before you make any commitments or send any money in, just always highly recommend that. And not just for this business, any business that you do, read 100% of the information, jot questions down, and reach out to me and talk uh, so we can go over everything for clarity. Because once you commit, it's what it is you commit. So, and if you decide to change your mind, that's when the cancellation and refund policy kicks in. And if you take the credit or take the transfer and move to another tour, you can't request a refund. We can also only offer you a transfer on another tour or a tour credit. Uh, so a lot of those things are very important to be clear on. Uh, that way you don't have any issues with anyone in reference to these things. Um, COVID-19 or whatever is going on in the world, um, that's not something I can, you know, I, you know it's something that I've, I'm flowing with everyone else, just like the airlines, the hotels, and everything. And But I can't stop or change our journeys because, you know, because there's outbreak or whatever is going on in the world. Life goes on, and I'm one of the people who believe in destiny, and if it's meant for things to happen, it's going to happen. So what you, you know, have to do is just keep moving forward and keep doing what we're doing. Uh, we have had the greatest year, 2019, on the African continent, where we saw more people from the diaspora interested in Africa than anything else. And then a few months later, um, we're told about this COVID-19 uh, drama. So last year, unfortunately, uh, April uh, 3rd to the 13th, Senegal and the Gambia tour was never able to kick off. We changed the dates like two or three times and did the best we could do, but we was never able to go. So, um, you know. Thankful um, we're here to continue the journey and, you know, and make this happen. And so far, I've been talking with my tour guide. I've been talking with people on the ground. And it's, you know, basically no different from the last two journeys that we did, which is Tanzania, November 2020, and then Ghana, December 2020, uh, where you just have to follow certain things. So uh, on this uh, departure and reminder list, which I'm primarily going to go through, uh, towards the end, at item number 28, I'm going to go through those details in, you know, in full clarity. And also, these are things that I posted on our WhatsApp page and did several posts. So for those that's in the WhatsApp group page for Senegal and the Gambia, uh, you can also look through the page and, and see the information. But the main point, it's uh, right there on uh, number 28. All right, and before I get into the preparation departure list, uh, what I have up front uh, in front of me on screen sharing, uh, is just the newsletter. The newsletter I just sent out, uh, with, most of the time we just have a generic topic list, uh, but we don't always just go through that generic topic list. In a situation like this, it's better for us to just go through the departure reminder list. Uh, last conference call, we did go to itinerary overview and also the topic list in the last few conference calls before that. So trying to work segments of going through information over and over. All, these, all of the calls are recorded and edited that way, you can literally go back and listen to it. And anything that we ever talk about or go through, uh, when you travel with me, it's the same thing. So it's also let, let, let everyone know that we have a consistent flow of information for clarity. And what we commit to and what we talk about is what we move on. And we don't switch up and things like that. Uh, so it's the same thing that we ask everyone to do, to be clear and be committed to what we're doing so we can just uh, get this done and make it work. And so um, once you scroll down on the newsletter, it's just going to have a whole lot of information. Um, 
as far as uh, calling or connecting into the conference call. Well, once you scroll down uh, some more, you, you know, you'll just see relative links, um, and most of these are all things that's going to connect you to the website, AfricaForAfricans.org. But what I want to share with you is once you scroll down and you see the links to all of the tours that we have, uh, that's what I was talking about. Those links are right there, but that's also a representation of the main menu for all of the tours that we have on the website. And then the other thing that we do have is our Black Power community uh, that we're building uh, there in Ghana called Black Star Pan-African Community. Anyone that's ever interested, uh, that has a whole lot more information uh, because the legality of that one is even more just so detailed. So a whole lot more information is there for clarity. So anyone can just you know, read through the information and then we can just have a dialogue on that and you know, and you know, move forward. And then for anyone that's interested, I have an email called Getting Started that I will send with applications and things like that. It's still relatively all of the same information on that's on the website, but it also gives you PDF files and things like that. All right, so not to go too much into the newsletter, let me switch over to the next thing, which is uh, Facebook. So we do have a uh, Facebook um, public group page for Senegal and the Gambia, which tour April 2021. Uh, so. Uh, the link is also in the newsletter, but it's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Senegal Gambia Tours. And you can just use the, the words to search it uh, on Facebook. Uh, so once we do things in the Gambia, the goal is the Gambia and, the Sen and Senegal, the goal is to just share whatever post we can share. And it's also for people who are traveling to just share anything they want to share. So these pages are not always being used. Uh, but you know, you just usually encourage those of us while we're traveling on tour. If you want to post or share anything, share it on that page because this uh, page is the same. You know, we'll change the name to 2022 and so on. But it is a flow of documentation that will be on the page. And then the, the main thing is video documentation. All of the tours that I have, uh, including this one coming up, we'll put together a nice playlist of all of the. Uh, you know, the videos that we have, you know, and it's usually just highlight videos. Uh, sometimes it's a few minutes um, and sometimes longer of all the different things that we're doing. That way everyone traveling with me can be clear about everything that we're doing. It's like if you're looking to travel to Ghana uh, there's a, or, or Tanzania, even more so Tanzania, all of the, the videos are already uploaded from last year. So everything that you see on there is what we're doing for the coming tour. It gives you this a visual as best as possible, and then you have the written information and so on. So these are the things that you know, not everyone does it, but I personally don't want no problems with people. You know? I, just, I, I like my peace in life, and I don't like dealing with a bunch of drama. So the best thing I want to do is that people know what they're getting into. And that's why I always tell everyone, we traveling with us, if this is for the black family. Uh, so if you have a white husband, white wife, or a white Asian, or whatever the situation, anybody other than black, you cannot bring them, and they're not accepted, and um, and that's why from here on, uh, what we do is we have a private Zoom call before we travel, and everyone has to show their face and identify themselves. And ultimately, if I didn't know who you are, I would ask to do a video call with you, uh, anyway. Uh, so usually, we would not get that far, and definitely would not get that far as you know we sh we meet at the airport with people who are not part of our group energy. And some people may look at that as petty or whatever they want to look at it, and that's fine however people want to look at it. But any business that you deal with, the best thing to do is be clear on their policies and respect it. And if you don't want to deal with that business, then you should find another business to deal with. And this is just all in respect to just being real and honest with people as much as possible. And before I continue with this list, um, I'm going to share a quick story of my last December 2020 uh, journey. I was there at my favorite restaurant in Ghana, which is Jamrock. Um, Jamaican restaurant, and we're there just enjoying a nice, uh, you know, Ghanaian Jamaican buffet. And you know, I had one lady. Um, I'm not sure where the conversation even came up with, but I'm just trying to enjoy my you know, dinner with my and my sister from Jamaica was there with me, and we're just talking. And then this uh, this lady mentioned that uh, she has a white husband. So the only thing I told her was like, uh, I'm happy you didn't try to bring him because it's what it is. But this was also someone that never, you know, never. We, you know, was the only person I never actually called and talked with me. The only, only reason I just got a pass is because our family is joining the journey. But it's like, that's why it's important to dialogue with the people you're doing business with. 
and things like that. But uh, I told her that's what we do and it's what it is. So she and other people may not understand that and it's not up to me to, to spend my lifetime breaking down those situations to people. You know, we understand that we live in a world where people, some people feel like it's okay to mix with other people. Me personally, I don't and that's just my business. I, the only people that I have as friends are black African people, black people in the diaspora and black people on the African continent. I don't have any other friends. I don't associate with nobody else and things like that. And this is letting people know I'm, I'm, my, my time and my energy is dedicated to everyone that's on this call, all of my brothers and sisters. And I do not want to divide that time because we have so much catching up to do. You know? And then again, I can explain that over and over, but some people will never get it because you know, I had the same problem in Brazil where this guy, this, um, that Spotify group told me about myself in front of everybody, called me all kind of names, called me racist, called me bias call me this call me that because i told him that his biracial son is okay to travel with us but his white girlfriend can't travel with us just you know so just in case anyone on the call you know in that world and before they send any money just want them to be clear that way we don't have any problems because i didn't appreciate both of them doing what they did you know because when I'm, when we get together and we're traveling the goal is for us to enjoy ourselves do our business our investment and we have a whole lot of network. I have so much interested people to connect everyone to in the different countries, especially Ghana, where we build our brand. And with Senegal um, and the Gambia, we're just going to re, you know, reorganize the energy to connect you with a fresh set of people that we've been building a relationship with because it's been a long time since I've been to both countries. It's been since 2006. And all the tours that I've tried to put on 2009, 10, 11 to go to Senegal and the Gambia all canceled. I just organized myself uh, two years ago, say we're going to just redo it and put our professional energy back into it. So let me um, leave, from, um, leave from here and go to the departure reminder list. All right, uh, number one, um, as we were talking about earlier, uh, all of the uh, tour information for this tour is a provider link. Uh, it's on the main menu on our website for Senegal and the Gambia, April 2021. Uh, number two, gratuities. Uh, what we do is collect a $50 um, per tour member uh, for gratuities, and we put it together, and that's how we work out uh, tips for guides, the people that's doing things for us, and also, you know, even things as simple as when we just need to get um, unlimited water for the group and things like that, we use the tip money to just uh, spread around and things like that, and, and it's used to tip for entertainment and so on. Uh, so those are the things that um, number two talks about. Uh, so the $50 uh, group tip, what I recommend everyone do is bring a $50 US dollar bill and also, you know, I'll go through that uh, further down, but uh, explain that right now also. I recommend everyone go to the bank and get 50s and 100s because what you more than likely have, and it may not necessarily work out like this, but wherever you go, uh, the 20s and less and lower bills, uh, you get a lower, um, you know, a lower amount as far as when you when you convert your money, uh, whether you go to the Forex Bureau or whether you have a money exchange and that sometimes we have traveling with us, um, maybe we just pick him up and you get on the bus with us and work out what he has to work out and then we just drop him off at the location he needs to be dropped off at. Uh, so I just want everyone to know that up front. And also if you have 50s and 100, that helps a lot because that's less, you know, that's less bills that you have. And then once you once you get to 50, you know, because when we get to um, Senegal and then the Gambia, we're just gonna you know, convert the money and then just you know move it around to take your things and you know, it makes things a lot smoother. And that's uh, for all tour members. Number three, when you visit, uh, do not come with a romanticized uh, notion about Senegal and the Gambia, uh, Africa, or you will be uh, disappointed, unnecessarily frustrated. And this is just a real talk. Uh, we have a lot of people come with certain expectations, and it doesn't make sense you uh, do that. Just come and just understand that everything that we have gone over and presented to you is what we're going to be sharing with you, and we're going to do our best to make sure that you're comfortable and have a great time. But uh, you have to literally understand that it's just a whole different world. Now, Africa is, is its own beautiful uh, energy, and I just, I just love it. I can't get enough. I've been traveling to Africa from 2004 to 20. 20 and non-stop and it's just the greatest experience of my life and it's given me a sense of purpose of what I can do 
to change the dynamics or be a part of the contribution to changing the dynamics for our people and for us to build a continent where we can just do so much other reconnection and other things in other parts of the, the, the black world. You know? Like one of our biggest things is that connection between West Africa and the Caribbean islands slash Central America. Uh, this, you know, the, some of the greatest energy of black people that, that are not being connected together because the, the route is so open, but you, know, you need planes, you need ships, and you need business contacts and info. So uh, Air Peace in Nigeria is doing a nice little connection, and they're working on a diplomatic uh, relationship as far as the flight sequence uh, after they did this an inaugural flight connection from Lagos to Montego Bay, Jamaica. You know, so that's kind of energy I want to like, you know, focus and connect us with because that's going to open things up for us as a people to really focus on ourselves and build and invest in this, into this new incredible black world. So you know, when we come to the, the continent and we see certain things, you know, it's like whatever challenges and issues you see, those, you know, we can create solutions and we can be a part of the change. And that's all I'm telling everyone. I'm not telling everyone how to act and how, what to do. I'm just share my professional advice based on, you know, what worked for me and what worked for a lot of other people. Because the first time I went to Africa was 2004 in Senegal. And I went with a group of friends, and trust me, they had nothing organized. And I can't remember having one bad day or one issue with it, you know, um, from the, moving around from one hotel to the next and, and so on. It, I was just so happy to be in Africa, and I just went with the flow, and things just got better and better once, you know, we had things a little more organized. Uh, number four, uh, the Delta Airlines uh, ticket. Uh, we didn't do, we didn't make group booking on this. Unfortunately, I had a lot of people who canceled. It's unfortunate, but it's the nature of the business. So uh, we just had to cancel with Delta group booking and lose whatever money we sent to Delta Airlines. And I just had to just suck it up and deal with it. But the people who canceled, that's why we have cancellation policy because the money that Delta had to keep was based on what people lost also. So, you know, it's uh, all good. Uh, all of us have tickets already, with the exception of one or two people. Once they close out on what they need to close out on, uh, they either get their own tickets or if it's someone that we agree we'll get a ticket for them, we'll get this for them. Uh, so the main thing now is you, know, you want everyone to go to delta.com and uh, you want to log in to you know, my trips and you're going to use your first and last name and your confirmation number to log in. And once you log in, and I'm going to go to my login here. All right, so I just uh, log in, and once I log in, I see mine, Dakar, uh, April 2nd. And I see me and my son's uh, name on there. All right, perfect. And once you log in, what you want to confirm, because one thing you know, as this, this adjustments of this world that we live in where you, know, you have so much changes, I've never seen so much flight changes. Um, so if I send you something a few months ago with your schedule, and it's just an email. If you didn't log in, you can't go by the flight information in that email. You have to log into My Trips and see your actual flight schedule. Uh, so I'm looking at mine, Atlanta to JFK. We leave at 12.15, get there at 2.27. Uh, and then the main thing is I'm looking to meet everybody at 5.30 for us to leave at 7.30. Uh, so, so all of those sequences are there. And the next thing is you, you want to select your seats go right to there to change seats and you know follow the sequence to select your seat. And anyone who ever have any issues with selecting seats or doing certain things, you can just always send me a message on WhatsApp or just reach out to me. And I'll be more than you know willing to just walk through from my computer to your computer um, the sequence of it because some people are more familiar with this and some are not. Along with that also this um, while you log in you can look at the very top and it'll say Sky Miles. So always recommending everyone create a SkyMiles account. And as I scroll down to the passenger information, I see me and my son information right there, his SkyMile numbers and my SkyMile number. And if you're not, if you have a different, if you're looking at your screen and you don't have a SkyMiles, it's just basically going to give you a link to you click on SkyMiles and you can just create your account. And the thing of once you create the account and you put your email and set those things up, any flight that you have in the, the system, if there's a flight change or any updates, you'll get an email from the system to your email, and that's how you get updates also. All right, and then I have also the link, um, 
the enroll enroll in link at the bottom of uh, number four. And uh, number five, I uh, always recommend everyone um, just make sure that you, uh, you secure your personal uh, documents, uh, and that includes um, making sure that you have uh, a copy or a scanned copy or email copy on your phone or on your email on your computer. Or if you want to leave information with someone, but make sure that you have all your things are uh, secure. At six, uh, please verify all travel documents and have them secure for travel dates. So some of the simpler uh, things, I want everyone to just verify the information of what they have. If there's any mistake on your flights and things, which can happen, uh, it's very difficult to happen, but it can happen. Uh, once you verify your information, if you see something not right, you reach out to me and I'll call the airlines and we'll have them change it or fix it. Uh, so that includes things like your name. Your name needs to be exactly like how it is on your passport to have less drama than anything else. Uh, seven, um, definitely always recommend everyone that's arrived uh, to the airport um, two to three hours, and you may just even want to arrive a little earlier if you can, uh, but the traffic is not that bad at the airport where, you know, where if you, as long as you get there in between two to three hours, you're good. All right, eight, uh, check bags. So for the check bags, uh, it is 50 pounds um, each. Uh, you're allowed two check bags. Uh, so make sure bags are secure with a lock and a name tag. If you don't want to put a lock on it, that's uh, you know, uh, your business and it's all up to you. But every bag needs to have a name tag on there that's visible, and that's more than just for the airline's need. It's for also when you travel with us and we're there at the hotel with other people. And when, you know, like a classic thing is, I don't know if someone, sometimes some people expect someone to just bring their bag up to your room, but they'll leave their bags out and then go up to their room. And then sometimes you look, because the goal is to usually call them in their room and say, come down and get your bags. And sometimes you look and you wonder there's no name tag. So once I see no name tag, I personally can't stress myself. What I do is push the bag to the side, right by the um, receptions counter, and then the individual is more than welcome to figure it out. Because by the time you get up there, you should notice that your bag is not there. But if your tag was on there, I would just call you in your room and have you come get it. And then also, you know, when you're at the airport and you're moving around and things like that, uh, all those, those whether, whether it's a laptop bag or whatever you had, it doesn't matter. Every single bag, your purse, whatever, every single bag needs to be identified. Uh, because reality of it is, People leave things on bus and leave things around, and that's a good way for us to help them get their uh, stuff back. So the baggage weight, um, Delta charges $100 for overweight bags of 51 to 70 pounds, and $200 for any additional uh, check bags over two check bags. Uh, number nine, carry-on bags. You may carry one bag and one personal item at no charge. Please note that all items must easily fit in the overhead bin or under the seat uh, in front of you, please make sure all, all your bags have a filled out ta name tags. That's just uh, myself repeating myself about that because it's been that much of a problem. You know, uh, last time we was in Tanzania, we got, you know, we're on ferry boats, we're on small jets, and while you're moving around to get to the ferry or get off the ferry, it's like a crazy rush, so you have to keep your eyes on everything and make sure that None of your bags are being left behind. And all them journeys that I just mentioned, we did good because nothing was lost. But, you know, you don't ever want to take that for granted. So it's something that you always want to share. And as simple as it is, go over and then explain the purpose of it. All right, number 10, um, when packing luggage, remember that less is better. You want to purchase clothing and other artifacts to bring back. So one of the things that you can do is... Um, you can bring some school supplies and some things that you want to get rid of. We don't have a designated school in either country to go to, but uh, it's one of those things where we always find a nice uh, cultural location uh, to donate school supplies until we you know, find somewhere where we can build a good relationship with. Uh, so what you do is you, you know, basically you have two 50-pound check bags, so you can even look at it as this. If you bring 50 pounds of things that you want to get rid of or give away or barter and things like that, and, and then during the time of you, while you're getting rid of that, all the things that you're getting, you can just put in that bag. And, you know, and then the other option is to pay for an over, you know, 
uh, either overweight bag or an extra bag, as in uh, point number eight. At 11, uh, bring a set of red, black, green, and gold clothing to pay homage to the ancestors. So what we have set for this one, and the different uh, journeys that we have, but uh, when we go to Gori Island to do our African Holocaust uh, journey, uh, reconnection, uh, it's just the colors of solidarity. And we do have Africa for Africans t-shirt, uh, which it was already ordered like a year ago. Uh, so uh, we still have most of the same people. So uh, anyone that we have that we don't have a t-shirt size for, I'll just end up ordering one uh, by the end of the month uh, so we can just have t-shirts for everybody. Uh, so when we wear those t-shirts, uh, what I'm looking at right now, and we just talk about it also when we get to the country, is the day when we do the city tour, uh, when we go to the big African uh, Renaissance monument statue um, to wear the, you know, wear the, it, it's a gold with red, green, and black, you know, the, the colors of all the things we do, red, black, green, and gold, uh, uh, shirt. But it, the goal is for us to wear the shirts and just come in solidarity. And I don't know if we're going to be able to take a group picture. It's a huge uh, statue. Uh, but uh, you know, the goal is just you know, to move around in the solid, solidarity and that energy. Uh, so that's the uh, Africa for Africans t-shirts, which will be given to everyone once we meet at the uh, airport. And I'm working on a new book. Um, and it's, um, you know, it's a tour book. And I put a schedule in there and things like that so you don't have to be flipping through paper. And also, I, I create digital copies now. So digital copies are usually sent ahead of time. And if you're on the plane and you need to find the hotel, you need to find the contact information and so on, instead of looking for me, you just go to your phone and click on WhatsApp. And hopefully, by then, you'd have downloaded the tour book. And then it'll, ha it'll have all those information in there. And I don't have a Senegal phone, but in the case of like Ghana, my Ghana cell phone is on there. And then, in general, any staff members or or people that we have in the country, uh, their information will be in the book. And if so, before we even travel, my goal is to, you know, go over the book information. And that's usually on the private Zoom call, which is only for those that are literally traveling with us, so we can introduce everyone to each, to each other and also go to the final floor of the program and then share any updates. And after that, uh, everything would have went over, over and over several times. All right, uh, 13, Senegal and the Gambia to April uh, second group. Uh, so for those who are leaving from Atlanta, um, we'll meet at 11.45 a.m. Uh, for the meet and greet uh, at the departure gate for our flight, and that's going to be based on the, the gate that we have that shows once we uh, check in. Uh, so I don't know that gate uh, right now, and it's, uh, it's a few different, different concourses in Atlanta, so it could be any of them, uh, E, F, uh, D, so who knows, but um, closer when we do the, the Zoom call, we'll have an idea. But uh, most people are not leaving from Atlanta, but the main meetup point is for us to meet up at JFK International Terminal. And it should be Terminal 4, but I'm also telling everyone I, I cannot, you know, I don't want us just to confirm that, even though we know that's the only terminal Delta leave out of as far as the international flights. And the gate, uh, once we find out, we can always text each other, especially the first of the people who go there to, you know, who get to the airport early. Um, I should be one of the first people there, so um, once we get the gates and everything, I'll be posting it on the WhatsApp and say, hey, family, when you, when, once you guys get to JFK, this is what gate we're on. We're in Terminal 4, gate number, and so on. And, you know, that's how we, uh, we, just, we just share information when we do these uh, journeys. And, and then, you know, we can start sh sharing, like, hey, I'm here, I just got here, and, you know, we start using the WhatsApp page to communicate and just build a nice energy, and then we just introduce each other again. Um, by then, you know, most people would have gotten an idea of, of each other since we'd have done a, a, vid a Zoom video call. And that's some I want everyone to understand. Once you get on the Zoom call, it's a video call. Everyone has to show their face. And it's a private recording, so the only thing it's being posted on is in the group page. And it's not being uploaded to uh, YouTube or anything. It's just literally a Zoom video link uh, recording um, that will be posted. And that way for those who are traveling and then for those who want to share their photos and say, this is me and things like that, it's trying to build a nice little interaction. 
All right, so that is meet up at 5.30 p.m. and our flight departs at 7.30 p.m. And the good thing about this, if we're going to Amsterdam or, you know, or Paris, we will be getting to Senegal in the night the next day at like 7 p.m. But since we're doing a direct flight from New York, we get there 12 hours less, which will be 7.05 in the morning. So that's a little bit different from our schedule that we had last year or even several months ago uh, when it was still the, the Paris route. So I was able to work that out for all of us. We did everyone's uh, ticket. Uh, so I'm hoping that everyone literally honestly had a chance in the last few months to, you know, to be clear on their, their schedule. Uh, 14, bring any necessary medicine that you might need. I don't bring medicine. I don't bring anything. So, I, you know, I have a few things in the rest of the the, the list to explain. But uh, it's up to you uh, and your doctor, uh, whoever you need to talk to, to be clear about what to bring. We do have building your immune system, which is another link um, on the, uh, you know, in the tour information. And that just gives you some good advice on herbs and more natural stuff. Um, so when it comes to health and wellness, that's what I actually would uh, recommend. At 15, camera, camcorders, uh, bring extra. If you're using one of those, you know, I guess, camera that has film, bring extra film. And for the rest of us, bring uh, extra memory card and rechargeable batteries. Uh, and if you have uh, electronics in general, bring a converter, foreign adapters, and extension cord. Or you can just buy one of those international travel pack, um, and it's more so it's going to be aligned with uh, what's in Paris. Since you know, but nevertheless, if you buy a universal, uh, you know, universal set, it will have the different adapters, and you can just whatever country you decide to go in the future, you're going to be able to use it. Because what I have that I've used in Ghana, I've used it in South Africa, Tanzania, and uh, many other countries, even uh, Brazil. So the universal adapters work. You may have like a universal adapter and you flip it this way, flip it this way. And by the time you use all the different positions, whether you're in the airport or so on, you know, it will connect and then you plug in your extension cord. And you want to get an extension cord that's going to be 110 to 220. Uh, so everything you know that you should have now, uh, or your camcorder or your, your laptop and so on, it should have that range because all these things are set for a global system, right? So that's what I recommend right there. Uh, 16, travel iron, alarm clock, plastic bags, compact umbrella, waterproof poncho, and any other convenient accessories. Example, uh, last time we were in Stone Town in, on Zanzibar Island. Um, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you have your waterproof poncho, but either some of us left it on the bus or some of us left it in our rooms. But we give, um, when, when I meet everyone, we give you an Africa for Africans tour bag. So that's one bag that's it's a light, simple bag. You can put your, you know, your things in it. And when you're moving around, in case it starts raining or something, you can pull out your umbrella and you can pull out your waterproof poncho. It was crazy because only one person was prepared. And uh, I mean, I enjoyed the, the showers of blessing, but you know, I also wish I would just have, my, you know, have it with me. So... Uh, when we bring these things, also we have to have a conscious mind, and we'll do our best to remind people that, hey, make sure you have a, a, a go bag with the things that you may need while you're moving around. Uh, sometimes we go out to eat at night, and maybe, you know, there's issues with mosquitoes, so you want to make sure you have your mosquito repellent and things like that, which is what I'm going to talk about now. Uh, so 17, mosquito spray or repellent or centronella oil, which is an excellent uh, insect repellent. Avoid wearing scented lotions or oil. Mosquitoes like sweet smell. Or scent. No, most of these sprays have dangerous chemicals, so do your research for the safest. Some things may be more of an organic blend, and some things may be maybe not. But that's why I want people to be clear on it. Uh, 18. A uh, calculator for basic things. Yes, I do know you can use your phone and things like that, but a simple calculator is just always a good tool. Um, and this, I'm just a person that's. I just always have one of these scientific calculators because I've been in the I've been in the world of this technology. You know, as a teenager, and I've always had one of these to do all my, uh, you know, all my little formulas for my technical courses, and it's just been a part of my life. So it's always right here by my desk, and when I travel, I have a few of them. But what um, you're using that for is to get familiar with the exchange rate. 
So the exchange rate, and it may be just a little bit different, it doesn't really change much, but for one US dollar, it equals 596 uh, CFA francs. And then for one uh, US dollars, that equals 50 Gambia dollars. All right, so it may take you a while to get a feel of those calculations. Um, just going from country to country and having to do this, after a while it gets a little simpler, but you have to always use, you know, use it in that way. Like this is the value of one dollar. So then when you look at it, some things may be a little bit more expensive than America, and some things may be a little bit less based on what you're trying to get. Yeah, but that you know kind of help you feel it. Uh, Nineteen, bring as much cash as you think you will need. I uh, recommend you know, individuals bring like four hundred to eight hundred dollars. That's just numbers I'm putting out there. Bring a Visa card to access the ATMs. Um, and MasterCard, um, at one point, you know, I need to actually change. At one point, MasterCard was not so much accepted, but now they're a lot more accepted. Uh, so you can still bring your MasterCard, and I'll just need to just change that. Uh, note, make sure that you call your bank and let your bank know that you're going to be using your, your card in West Africa and then give them those details of the dates and everything. And the goal of that is to make sure that if you decide to use your card, it doesn't get blocked, even though it can still get blocked, but it's a better chance to get it set up that way. Yeah. And then if it does get blocked, no big deal. Um, we just, you know, you, you can just uh, call the, um, you know, 800 number or the international number um, on the back and uh, whatever uh, credit company or bank you use, they'll fix the problem. I've had to do that um, Unfortunately, uh, several times during my, you know, during my 14 plus years of traveling to Africa, uh, but it's you know it's not that bad. It's it's just uh, one of those situations. All right, so the weather is going to be in the high um, 70s and to the low 90s. You know, like tropical countries like uh, Jamaica or like Miami, uh, Florida, in certain parts of the year. So, but uh, our point is. You want everyone to understand that it's going to be a hotter weather, especially for those of us that you know, it's still a little cold now. Uh, so you want to bring light clothing, sandals, shorts, walking shoes, uh, ladies, sundress, tank tops, swimwear, for those who want to actually go swimming with us, uh, which you're more so going to, you know, which we can do in the, in the pool in, the, in Senegal, but in the Gambia, we're actually at a beach resort. So... Uh, me and my little boy, we always go out there to swim in the pool, and we also always go out there to swim in the ocean. Uh, it's just always fun and excitement for us. And for anyone else that saw our Tanzania journey when we were in uh, Zanzibar Island in uh, Kenwa Rocks, uh, we just out there swimming, got our, our you know, snorkeling gear on and things like that. So if you're open to that and you want to do snorkeling and things like that, just you know, bring your equipment and just enjoy. All right, and also casual slash African clothing or just, you know, just any evening clothing, um, especially if we do a business network conference and farewell dinners and things like that. We don't have so much um, conference on this journey because most of what we have to do, it takes a little time to build, as you know, same as I remember, it's going to Ghana in 2006. And then from 2017 and on, we always had business conference and we always had schools and things like that. So just reusing this journey to Senegal and the Gambia as a foundation journey. Uh, so certain things may be added in the next 30 days as I'm trying to reach out to certain people now that we have a better feel that we're going and the country is open up and everything. All right, I'm just going to flow through the next uh, 10 and then we're just going to open up for questions. Uh, 21, no photo taken allowed at airports, uh, state office building, and other government facilities. Um, your equipment uh, may be confiscated and you could be arrested. And I know that sounds simple, but um, some countries, it's, it's weird like that. So I always, I'm always on the tour guides to like, hey, just let us know when we need to stop and not record or, or hide our camera or do whatever. That way we don't have an issue. And trust me, I wouldn't be saying that if we didn't have these issues in the past. Now, people have been removed from the bus and been lectured by security officials because they're, they're right there taking the photo and taking the video right in front of them and they're waving like, don't do it, don't do it. And you know, the next thing you know, they stop the bus and you have to stop because we don't need to be chased by police. So just, you know, it's all these things is not, it's not being dramatic and things, just trying to get us to be clear about the flow of these things. And again, 
and we're on the bus with our tour guide that goes for, for him to just let us know what we can do and what we can't do. And I learned a whole lot about that, just especially when we went to Tanzania. It's a whole different country. Uh, you, you know, you may just be familiar with going to like Ghana and you're able to do certain things and people have, you know, but you just have to treat each country different until you really just get a good feel um, of how to move around because there are going to be differences. Um, and not like some people think like this, just one Africa where everything is all the same and things like that. Everything is varied from country to country, unfortunately. All right, uh, 22, uh, we do not uh, offer travel insurance, so I do have a link that says Passport um, Health uh, USA, and that's just one link. That's because a few friends just use that service uh, this, that traveled with us, told me about it, and I just put that on there, but uh, I'm not saying use them. Uh, you can use it as a reference, but uh, you have to go out there and do your own research and things like that. There's not much we can do with travel insurance. My goal is always to use what we have set up and what the airline set up to help you get to another trip in case, like, you know, if you don't show up on the, the journey and if you cancel, you know, Delta give you a credit and, you know, we also do the same, give you a credit and, you know, minus the, you know, whatever non-refundables. So that's what um, we both offer. Uh, but nevertheless, um, for medical or for COVID-19 and things like that, Make sure you read through all the fine print and make sure that you're getting a policy that's going to cover your health issues, especially if you have, you know, if anything happened with your health and you need to go check yourself into a certain hospital uh, that insurance cover it and things like that. So it's probably a lot you have to read through for that. Uh, and I've never gotten travel insurance, so I'm not the right person to advise people on anything other than just letting them know that it's not something that we have in our setup. Uh, 23, uh, toiletries, including the Tissue, soap, feminine napkins, wet wipes, uh, facial tissues, washcloth, beach towels, and laundry soap. Uh, so these are things that you can just bring as your accessories. Will they have tissue at the hotel? Absolutely. But when you're on the bus, you may have, need tissue to blow your nose or whatever and, this, and so on. So these are those things that we're bringing. And then like myself, you know, we're going to be going to the beach. So, you know, we usually, you know, a little boy, we usually have our beach towel and everything. Um, with a long rest of our gears ready to go. And then if you know if you want to if you want to get laundry done you just honestly you just have to bring your laundry down to the receptionist and have them give you a quote for it or just process your laundry and get it back to you. But if individuals want to watch something in the tub and hang it up inside of the bathroom, hey, fine, you know, bring your you know, your laundry soap. So that's what uh, we're actually talking about. Twenty four the people in Senegal and Gambia are very uh, friendly. How, however, be wary of people who just want to make quick money off you and make promises that they cannot keep. You should know much about the people that you're doing business with um, before you start planning these uh, business. I will never understand and I will never get it, um, how people do those things, but I've seen it. If I didn't see it from my eyes, I probably wouldn't understand it also, but people travel with me and, you know, we do a bunch of business in Ghana, including land and community development, but people will still go and meet strangers and give them a ridiculous amount of money because the person said that they're chief or the chief's father, the chief cousin, or, or whatever situation about a chief. is like sometimes you feel like too much people are chiefs and give people money for land or for business and then when they lose their money, they're asking us what happened and things like that. It's like wherever you go in the world, including you know where you are currently, you have crazy people who are just dishonest. And some, you know, when you go international, sometimes people see you looking green and they're like, okay, I'm going to spit something at this person as far as, you know, some information and I'm going to see if they grab, grab. So the best thing to do is to just come and enjoy yourself. And if you are set to do business, make sure you do business with a professional. Like example, you're looking to get property in a country that, you know, we can't really help you with connections. Ideal people, establish real estate agents that have a physical building that's not going to disappear overnight and things like that. And even when you're dealing with people in different countries, get to know their family, get to know who they're dealing with. And our tour guide and other people that we may have in the country, they're your best bet to connect with. Uh, we have a direct relationship. I have a relationship with every tour guide I do business with, and I try my best to know them as much as possible. And we're always working on trying to build a strong relationship where we can do real good business because beyond us tourism, 
you know, we, I've talked to all the tour guides I've worked with, and all of us want to, to, you know, to see us put our resources together to do good stuff uh, in the country. And, that's, you know, and tour guides are usually very diplomatic about their country, and so they're always open to go above and beyond and connect you with good people that they can also trust because they know, if, you know, you know, they know it's a reflection of them and our relationship and what we're building in the business. Uh, so that's the best thing I could tell anyone. In the state. And definitely for Ghana, outside of the people that we have business conference with or the people that you roll with, that I roll with, trust zero, zip, nobody because I cannot help you when things go wrong. And I've seen too many situations and I just want everyone to understand, be accountable and things like that. Just like I've shown everyone that I do business with that I've had 14 years of long track record of going to 10 different African countries um, and several of them doing tourism and documented and share all of my information, pictures, videos, blog, vlogs, uh, playlists, you know, conversation interviews, and so on, so on. Um, like literally this a whole decade plus of information is all online. Now, it doesn't make no sense for you just to deal with someone that has no documentation, no points of reference and things like that, but people do it, and it, I would never get it. So I'm asking people, please, just be careful, because once these things happen, I cannot help you. Uh, 25, games for leisure. So uh, deck of cards, dominoes, chess, board games. Uh, we may be on a resort or we may just have some flexible time and or you just maybe want to just be in the lobby in the evening and you know, you're not necessarily going out and you just want to socialize. So those are always good things to have. Uh, 26, emergency items, uh, flashlight, basic first aid kit, laxative, Pepto-Bismol, anti-diarrhea, and so much other things. Uh, but these medications are not all natural, so do your research for the safest and healthiest thing to use. Number one. Outside of this list, the only thing I plan on bringing is a flashlight and a basic first aid kit, which is part of you know, my equipment bag. Other than that, don't plan on bringing these medicine. So, and for anyone who gets to the country and you need medicine, there's always a pharmacy around in the direct area. I've not been to one country where within a mile or two that there weren't a few pharmacies. Uh, 27, uh, literally my favorite. Uh, please focus on enjoying yourself and accomplishing your mission. Uh, do not get distracted by others or get caught up into complaining. This is an experience that will have its ups and downs. It's a part of the introduction to Senegal and the Gambia, uh, South Africa. We recommend you go with the flow and enjoy your time in paradise around the wonderful itinerary that we have put together on the journey for a lifetime. Uh, so the first thing I want to tell everyone is that I don't own any hotels, I don't own any bus, I don't own any planes, I don't own any of those things. I just connect with the people we can do business with. But if anyone have any issues as your representation, I would have no problem with talking with you and talking to the owners or the manager of anything, you know, especially when it comes to like hotels or the bus company or whatever. Uh, and that's the best thing I advise all of us to do, just be adults and have respectful conversation with the people you need to talk to. Please, nobody, I, I, do not be at the breakfast table or dining table gossiping about anything because if you have an issue, your tour members cannot help you. You come to me and come to the, uh, my tour guide and the people we have and we'll fix your problem because uh, once you do that, we're going to find that very disrespectful. And, you know, we, and in, in some situations in the past, I've, you know, I've asked two people to, to leave the resort because they caused a bunch of chaos by being disrespectful to one of our elders that own a resort. And it was uncalled for this unprofessional, this very nasty, raggedy attitude. You don't come to another country and disrespect the people who built the place of business for you and then do their best to welcome you and accommodate you. Fortunately, both of these tours, um, Senegal and Gambia, is four-star hotel. Um, Tanzania, the hotel is you know, about the same. And in Ghana, it's bed and breakfast. And what I'm talking about is One Africa and the Carrick Hotel in Cape Coast. They are not four or five star hotels, but I appreciate the people who built them to have them there because if they weren't there, we wouldn't really have anywhere else to stay because there's not a whole lot of hotels there. And anyone who wants to stay in a five star hotel, they can pay the, the, the $100 extra a night and we'll make arrangements to get them in a five star hotel. So that's the best thing that I would recommend to be a problem solver, but to force people 
who you know who clear you know because every schedule that you have has a link to the hotel that we're staying in. So it's up to you to click on that link. If you need to call, ask questions, do whatever, look at the website. It's up to you. But I'm perfectly fine with 100% of all the things that we have on the you know on our schedule because everything is designed for an experience. Just like this experience is to give you an experience of four-star hotels owned by black African people, by Senegalese and Gambians, you know, and so on. So that's how we kind of you know, do these things. So just want everyone to understand it's the same thing. I talk with people who are part of my business and investment group and things like that uh, because I, you know, I won't even get into that. Uh, but people do some weird stuff. You know, it's like literally people would, Will would hear gossip and information from other people, and then next you know, you know they're telling you they 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 don't want to do this no more. They don't want to do something or they can't. So I was like, well, make sure that you talk to the source. So and also in this situation when we're traveling, don't listen to other people gossip and stuff about COVID-19 and things like that, which you're gonna get into. You're gonna go right to the source of what we're gonna go to in a in a minute. All right, and uh. 28, um, it's uh, also just reminding everyone again to bring any medicine that you may need, but do your research on any needed vaccination you may need to get. We have no recommendations, so you may need to talk to your doctor. Like, I can't give out recommendations for any of these things because I don't want none of these things coming back on me that you're giving medical advice and you're not a medical doctor and things like that and, and people trying to sue you and things like that. So what I have right here is all travelers um, going to Senegal over the age of two must present an original uh, PCR COVID-19 test certificate showing a negative result. Testing will no longer be available upon arrival. So when you get to the country, you don't have to worry about getting no testing. So the test must be issued at least five days before departure uh, from, from the embarkment point to Senegal. So we get to Senegal April the 3rd. So the best thing I can recommend is you know, March 30th, 31st, and April 1st. You just get your test results within those days. Uh, not that you're doing five days instead of three. It's a little simpler. Just make sure your results are within that day, just at the end of March or the beginning of April, and you should be fine. During that time, uh, if anyone has any issues where their results didn't come back or something happened, please just communicate with me right away. Uh, and don't just feel like it's the end of the world. Um, you know, just dialogue so we can be clear and communicate with me if you have issues so I can assist you. That's my goal. You are tour organizing the tour leader to make sure that I assist everyone to make sure that they're good and they're clear. And I'm available during an emergency like that. But everyone needs to have that paper so they can show the Delta representation before uh, they check you in fully and they issue you you know, check your bags in and give you access to just go through security and get to your gate. All right, and I'll also um, just uh, recommend everyone bring at least one or two face masks. You can bring a surgical mask and a regular cloth mask, and that should suffice. All right. And the reference that we're talking about, all of the uh, COVID tests, uh, um, what I have is three links down here. I have a uh, sn.usembassy.gov covid-19-information. So that's um, the U.S. Embassy that's uh, there in Senegal. They just usually do their updates to let uh, U.S. travelers know this is what you have to go to and this is what you have to be clear on if you want to get access to traveling to Senegal. And that's the same link I have for the Gambia. And then I also have the same link for the travelstate.gov um, website, which uh, the link is is COVID testing required U.S. entry. So it, it's going to tell you that uh, you need a COVID test to enter the Senegal and also one to enter Gambia and then one to re-enter the U.S. So right now I'm communicating with our tour guide so he can let us know where we can get a COVID test taken while we're in Senegal so we can get our results back right away and then while we're in the Gambia so we can use it to cross back into Senegal and then also get to the airport. I know it is crazy and everything, and that's why I want everybody to be clear about what they're getting into because, you know, we all have to follow these rules and things like that, and it is frustrating, but uh, we all have to just make sure that we put aside separate money 
to take these uh, three COVID tests. Uh, so it could come up anywhere from $100, $200, and so on all together. The best thing I recommend, get the free one here in the U.S. where you can get it done within three to five days. And then we'll get um, a, good, a good group rate uh, when we go to, uh, when we're in Senegal and also Gambia, you know, because in that situation we can negotiate and uh, you know, talk to our tour guide to see if he could put a good word in for us to get that done and worked out. Uh, 29, uh, when you get to baggage claim in Senegal, get your own free cart and put your bags on it. Uh, make sure that uh, you have your check bag receipt uh, from when you ch check your bags. Once you check your bag in the U.S., you get a baggage receipt, and that's also good in case any bags is missing or lost or anything like that because that's a direct scan of the number of the, the, the tracking system that moves your bag. The main thing I want everyone to understand is that when you're pushing your cart uh, to the bus or things like that, outside of our crew and staff members, um, let, you know, anyone try to push your cart feed, just tell them no. Uh, so just trying to get everybody to prepare, prepare for this when they get to Senegal because I'm sure not much has changed since I last went and I even had updates on it that you know, guys are still going to be out there getting their hustle on anything. I'm not trying to stop anyone's hustle. It's just these are liability issues. I don't want anyone claiming, well, my purse was, was up there and then my cell phone and my wallet was there now. The person pushed my bag and it's gone. Very unlikely to happen. I mean, people are not you know, dishonest people, but we can't go by that. We just have to go by this, you know, being you know, safe and clear. All right, and the, um, the last thing is uh, bring things that will help you make this uh, moment of connecting to the land of your ancestors special. So we are going to Gori Island, and we're also going to James Island. So these are African Holocaust um, location where we do our reconnection and find out what happened to our African ancestors and also pay homage. So if you need to bring, you know, a picture or some candles, it's all up to you. Uh, we just, you know, go to embrace everyone making that a special connection. And family, um, let me just stop as, I, as I've talked and went through all of the information. And what I want to do now is just open up for questions and answers. So I'm going to stop the screen sharing and also unmute us. All right, family, we're in the mute all mode. So press star six to unmute yourself, give your name, where you're calling from, uh, your question, and what journey you're traveling on. Well, money. this is Philip Douglas from Gallatin, Tennessee. I am wondering when we exchange money, will it all be in paper? Will there be coins? It'll be, it'll be ma mainly in papers and if they have to give you coins, it'll be just the um, money and coins, but um, I can't say, uh, but the goal is to get you um, paper money. You, I mean, you do get coins in some countries, but it's usually for the lower denominations. Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Hi, right, family line is open. All right, Juma, go ahead. Okay, so, um, you know, we had pushed um, the trip back um, um, a whole year from last year, right? And I was just trying to want to confirm that uh, still um, the, the accommodations hadn't changed for my tour. Yes, I'm saying nothing has changed. Uh, it's the same schedule we have. Okay. All right. That's all I really need to know. Yeah, nothing has changed. So those who pay for single rooms and those things, all that stuff is in place. And that's why I, could, that's why I transferred everybody ticket. So the main thing I need to everyone to do is just make sure that their, their, their ticket is good and they can access it and log in and do all those things and that they'll be meeting us at um, JFK Airport. Um, I wonder if there would be, you know, I work for the VA, so I'm going to probably take the COVID vaccine on Monday, but they were probably, but I would probably still need to test before I leave, right? You need to have a result within five days of you leaving. Yeah. Okay. So you don't need to take it until the end of, um, end of March. Well, March 31st. Yeah. You may not want to wait till March 31st. I mean, you may have to do it like the 28th because as long as the results come back March 30th, 31st, and April 1st, you're good because we leave on the 2nd and we get to the country on the 3rd. Okay, that's the result, good. Once you get 
to the country on April 3rd, the results can't be no more than five days old. Okay. So when so we also so we definitely want to make sure that we don't get it any earlier than that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. And you did log into your ticket, right? Um, I get an email update um, from uh, from De from Delta. Yes, yeah, not the same thing. I uh, want everyone to just log into Delta.com and go to My Trips. Okay, I'll do that again after the call. Yeah, that way, and then make sure your seat is good and everything if you need to select meals and all those things. Sure. But, um, yes, because you have your Sky Miles, they'll send you updates, so that's good. So that's what I mentioned to everyone, that that Sky Miles um, account, uh, just make it to where if there's any issue going on with your, your, your flights, uh, they'll communicate with you via text message or, like, email. So, yeah, so they're, they're also offering a Sky Miles credit card. Yeah, for those who want to apply for it, I don't know um, what it takes to get approved for it. Yeah, I think that that allows you into their lounge or something like that. Uh, this, as far as the lounge, uh, they have these ridiculous fees, like you know, for you to have access to those uh, Delta lounges. Right. So it works for some people who just do those kind of trips, but for us, we usually get to the airport. By the time we get to the airport. Uh, we actually need to actually sit down with each other and introduce ourselves and make sure that you know we all we're all good in. Right, you don't have time to go in there and have a cocktail and a shower. I don't know why somebody want to go to the airport and have a shower because you, <laughs> you take a shower before you leave and you fly and then you get off the plane and you go to your hotel. I know. Actually, I, I was just joking though. Well, some people do that, but I still don't understand why they want to do it. But yeah, I've heard right. people do that. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, for those who need to do those things, they have all of those things: coffee, Wi-Fi, lounge. You know, like some people have flights where their flight don't leave for 12 hours. Yeah. Especially since you're at an international airport like New York, that can easily happen. All right, then that's all I've got. Absolutely, brother. Look forward to uh, connecting with you and everything. And um, we have a nice, solid group. Uh, right now, it's 12 of us, and working on some adjustment. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little bit less. Yeah, can I ask you one last question, though? Sure, no problem. Um, you don't do tours to Nigeria, do you? Uh, no, I never thought about it. Never crossed oh. my mind. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, and, and that's the reason of that is all the countries I've selected, the 10 countries that I've been to, it's all, quote, uh, tourism country. You know, uh, you know, even though I don't do tours to, like, like Egypt, but that's, like, straight up tourism. And so it'd have to be, it'd have to be things that I could really put together, an itinerary, and I've never been able to do that. Even people have been telling me to go to Rwanda, and I was like, um, I just, you know, I'm not into just going to countries just to go to countries because they're a nice developing country and a lot of things going on. It has to be like all the countries that we have. You notice there's an African Holocaust on all countries. Exactly. With that. So that's like my primarily connection to even, that was like my original interest in Africa. And ever since then, I've always found a place where we can go back and reconnect and pay homage to our ancestors and, you know, kind of, Connect, connect in solidarity for this you know, black power nation building and doing good things in the country and things like that. But um, I don't know much of those location in places like in, in Nigeria or uh, Rwanda or some of the other countries people tell me. But the good thing about it, you know, other people go to those countries, so I'm always in support of that. So people go check, you know, go roll with them and see how it is. Okay. But if Nigeria really pull off that flight, and they have a consistent flight schedule from Lagos to Montego Bay, Jamaica. I am in, not necessarily just tourism in Nigeria, but being able to connect and do like certain business where you know I find a group of people from the Caribbean who want to come to West Africa, and maybe they want to do a few, some some days in Nigeria and also some days in Ghana. Like th that'd be something that will work out good. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, absolutely. All right, family line is open. Greetings, Bomani. This is Sheila. My question is in regards to to Ghana. Does the same thing apply to Ghana with the money exchange and all the other details? Yeah. Um, while we were going through the Senegal and Gambia list, I was hoping that people were interested in Ghana and any other country. They look because it's a, you have the same exact list, point one to okay. thirty. Um, so, with the money exchange uh, for Ghana, it was for one U.S. dollar, you get five. Point eight uh, CDs and maybe 5.7, and it fluctuated a little bit. But uh, that's um, 
you know, that's for that. And I want to say for Tanzania for one US dollars is 2,300 or 2,300 uh, Tanzania shillings. So everyone that's traveling to those different countries, I have the same flow as like a format. That way, whenever we go to it, it's relevant for all tours. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. You're welcome. Bible money is Susan. Uh, greetings, Susan. Will the tour guides be exchanging money for us? Uh, no, the tour guide would not be exchanging money. What we'll do is two things. I would either go to a Forex Bureau, which is a designated location where they do money exchange, or we get one of our associates uh, that we'll pick up at a location, have them get on the bus with us, and while we're moving around, they'll exchange money and then we'll drop it back off. So those are the two frequencies you work. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. So, family, in the age of COVID-19, does anyone have any questions? And I, or I guess everyone is clear about point number 28 and the COVID test we have to take from the U.S., to Senegal, to the Gambia, the three COVID tests. Only thing I can give right now, honestly, is a price, but I will post the price or estimated price in the group page on WhatsApp. All right, so family, the line is open, so let's wait for the last few questions and then we'll close the call. And honestly, just hoping that everything that was read is clear and so on. All right, family, so I'm going to give it another uh, minute, and if I don't hear any questions, I'm just going to close, and that means that everyone is clear. And then I'll post the raw recording in the group WhatsApp page for all of the groups that we have that we talked about. And then once I get a chance to review the recording and go through and clean it up, I'll get it uploaded to YouTube and put together a better presentation to share with because... All the tour information and preparation that we have, my goal is always to share it out there for all the people that are looking to travel because uh, these are also searchable preparation information. And what we went over is just a whole lot of uh, details. All right, so perfect family. So uh, family, appreciate everybody's time. And um, one thing I'm just going to say with everyone, please just all be accountable for our commitment to what we're doing, and uh, I'm available to communicate throughout the entire week. Uh, so you can always send me a message on WhatsApp, or you can always call me, and things like that. And you can also send an email. So those are the things that uh, look out for throughout the week. And if I don't connect back with you right away, usually I can connect back with you within a few hours, or at the worst case scenario, the next day depends on the flow of things going on here. But uh, beyond that, my goal is to communicate with everyone immediately. Like immediately means within an hour. Um, that way, whatever issues and things that you have, we can talk about it and discuss it right away. All right, so family, um, once again, this is Bomani Tamba, your tour organizer and tour leader for the Journey of a Lifetime. And uh, I'll be on standby and we'll keep in touch. And uh, please, everyone, make sure you access the WhatsApp page and get used to it that way we can flow with our communication in there because my goal is to limit email sent sending to the group and the good thing about whatsapp even if it's two days later you click on it to scroll up and look through the information and see if there's anything important posted and usually it's going to be a lot especially the last 30 days before we travel because mm -hmm. we're just going to be repeating ourselves to make sure everything is clear thank you bamani oh, have welcome. a good night have a good week uh, same to you, and let me mute all. All right, so family, everyone's unmuted. Everyone, good night. I uh, take care of yourself. In touch. Peace and blessings. Good night. Good night.